So you're ready to start earning some passive income with the Helium Hotspot, but you're not sure should you get the indoor or the outdoor? Or maybe you've already got a Helium Hotspot and you're wondering about getting a second one. How will it conflict with my earnings? Can I put two hotspots in one location? A lot of the questions that you have are ones that are not in the documentation because simply put, you got to experiment with them. You got to find out. And most people don't take the time or the energy to go out, buy both hotspots, and then test them out in different configurations. But today, I've got the answers to those questions. Because you see, I've been running both the indoor and the outdoor hotspot for several months. And I've tested them in all kinds of different configurations at the same location, moving them around, different elevations, everything you could possibly want to know, I'm going to answer for you today. But if there happens to be a question I don't get to today, hey, put it in the comments below. I'm always happy to share my knowledge and even run some new experimentation on it just to get you your answers. So if you're ready to find out if Helium is the one for you, let's get into it. Now, the first question I always get is which Helium hotspot should I buy? The indoor is $249. The outdoor is $499. Does that mean the outdoor earns more than the indoor? Does that mean that I'm gonna get better returns if I spend more up front? Well, this opens up a whole slew of secondary questions. And so those are where we have to even begin before we can dive into which hotspot you should buy. So first of all, let's make sure you can even run a hotspot. That's the very first thing you should ask yourself is can I run a hotspot in the country I live in? Well, if you check the map here, you can see the only countries right now to run a helium hotspot is the United States, Mexico, and Puerto Rico. Now, if you're not in one of those three locations, then sadly, Currently, a hotspot is not available to run in your area, but they are onboarding more countries very quickly because after all, they are partnered up with T-Mobile Network and T-Mobile just partnered up with Starlink. That's right. There's a lot of partnerships going on there and I see some tremendous growth opportunities within the Helium Network. Now that we know we can run a Helium hotspot, the next question is, how much is each Helium hotspot going to earn based on where I'm going to set it up? Well, to break that down, we first have to realize that the Helium Hotspot earns in two different methods. The first is called Proof of Coverage. The second is Data Offload. This is one of my hotspots, and as you can see, the Proof of Coverage remains relatively the same day by day. The Data Offload, however, that has a huge variation based on how many cell phones are offloading data to that hotspot. So let's break down the earnings into two simple structures. First is Proof of Coverage. Let's go find out how much you can actually earn based on your proof of coverage or the area you're going to set up your hotspot. Now, to do that, we're going to open the planner.hellohelium.com website, and I'll put a link in the description down below. So right here, you can see I'm in the city of Boise, but see how it's all gray right now? If we start to zoom in, you're going to see purple hexes appear once you get close enough. And there we go. Start to see that purple flow in here. Now, each of these purple hexes is a different multiplier. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Let's say we're gonna set up right here in this purple hex. That tells us we have a reward multiplier of one times. Now, if we're not in a purplish hex, but say we're out here in the gray hex, that has a reward multiplier of 0.4. Now that means your proof of coverage tokens are gonna to be multiplied by either 1.0 or 0.4 based on the location you're at. Now there are some places in the world that have up to a 100x multiplier. That's right. What you're looking for is you want to zoom way, way out, find your country, find your city, and look for something that has really bright purple, like right down here in Los Angeles. Check out how bright purple that is. Let's go ahead and zoom into one of those locations. We're going to click on that to zoom in real quick. And right there, that has a five times multiplier. That means if you were to set up a hotspot in one of these locations, you're going to earn five times of what I can here in Boise, Idaho. So the brighter purple, the better. That's the first thing that affects your proof of coverage awards. Now, the next question comes about, isn't the bigger, more powerful hotspot going to earn me more if I'm in that multiplied location? Well, believe it or not, the answer is not always a yes. In fact, it's a no in my instance. And I'm going to break this down for you today, but it's going to get very complicated. So bear with me here. We're going to be utilizing the PlannerHeliumMobile.com website along with the cell phone app called Helium Geek. And I'll put a link in the description down below. But I like using Helium Geek to get a little more drilled down bit of information on my hotspots. But let's look at my exact setup here and I'll show you why my outdoor hotspot is actually hindered based on my location. So right here, we can see in this hex, it's covered by two hotspots. My indoor, Skinny Ceramic Bat, and my outdoor, Howling Ivory Elk. 
Okay, let's go ahead and turn on the coverage on this map. So go here and go coverage signal strength. Let's turn that on. There we go. So we could see that some of these are going outside of that purple hex. So what kind of effect does that have on my returns? Well, if we look with a Helium Geek app side by side with a Helium Planner, let's focus on Skinny Ceramic Bat, the indoor hotspot. As you can see, it covers one hex and that has an Oracle boosting multiplier of 1.0. And you can see that the proof of coverage over the last day has been 1,522.38 mobile tokens, okay? Keep that in mind. So full 1x multiplier on one single hex. Now let's go take a look at the outdoor hotspot in the exact same location. So let's go ahead and arrow back and let's pick the Howling Ivory Elk. That's the outdoor. And as you can see, it covers a lot more area. But when we check it on Helium Geek, it shows us right there Covered hexes is 75, but the Oracle boosting multiplier is only 0.77. That's because several of these blue hexes here that it's covering are outside of that purple 1x multiplier. And if they're out here, that means they're earning a multiplier of 0.4, a whole lot less. So it averages out the entire coverage area of your hotspot coupled with the multiplier of that particular hex. Now, when we look at the proof of coverage rewards for the last 24 hours, we can see the Howling Ivory Elk has earned 1,367.1 mobile tokens. That's actually less than the indoor hotspot, which gave us 1,522. That's a difference of 155 mobile tokens in a day. And at current market value, that's about 16 cents less per day that I'm earning from the outdoor hotspot than I am the indoor hotspot. So as you can tell in this example, just buying the most powerful hotspot is not going to give you the best rewards. In fact, depending on your location could actually hurt your rewards in the long run. So do your research and decide which is the right hotspot based on your physical location and what you're trying to achieve with it. Now, the next question I get on proof of coverage a lot is how many hotspots can I have in a certain area? Well, that's where we've got to look at the documentation here. And it talks about the Wi-Fi hotspots for the indoor. Now you can only have one indoor hotspot per hex, but let's say your house is big enough to cover multiple hexes. So let's take a look at Skinny Ceramic Bat again. Now if we zoom in on this map, as you see, my house actually covers two hexes. So I have one indoor hotspot right up here at the front and I could put another one back here in this location. That would put the indoor hotspots in independent hexes, therefore earning the same amount. But if I were to set two in the same area, they are not going to earn. Only the one that's been there the longest will earn proof of coverage awards. Now, going back to the documentation on outdoor hotspots, it says a maximum of three Wi-Fi outdoor hotspots are eligible to receive proof of coverage awards for providing coverage in a given hex. So that means back here on the map, I could actually set up two more outdoor hotspots. Let's say I wanted to bring one and have it cover this area down here and another one and cover this area over here. I could actually set them up back to back facing different directions. And that would give me a full 360 degree coverage all the way around my house or business, depending on what I wanted to do. But remember, it's only gonna earn maximum returns if it's actually offloading data. That's where the real rewards are. So my advice to you, don't try and game the system. Plan logically and strategically to the maximum earnings you can get for data offloading, because that's where the real money is. Now, a little pointer I can share with you. I do have an indoor and an outdoor setting up at the same location, doing different jobs. And the great thing is the proof of coverage does not seem to affect each other between indoor and outdoor. So keep an eye on the news that might change in time. But currently, yes, you can have an indoor and an outdoor at the same location and both will earn full proof of coverage awards. Now, the next question I get talks about the new rule called HIP 131. What is it? How does it affect me? Well, putting it simply, HIP 131 states, any hex that is in a multiplier of 0.5 or higher must be verified by a device running the Helium network cell phone plan. Now, if I'm out here in this gray area, as you can see, it has a multiplier of 0.4. Well, that doesn't have to be verified. So I can set up a device and earn full proof of coverage, not a problem. But if I'm over here in one of the purple areas that has a 1x multiplier, and I set up a hotspot and it does not get verified, it will not earn proof of coverage awards. So if you're going to set up a device within one of the purple areas that have a 0.5 or higher multiplier, it must be verified by a Helium Mobile cell phone plan. 
So my advice to you is make sure you plan accordingly when you do get a hot spot. Make sure you're doing it the right way and don't try and game the system because Helium does have the right to blacklist your hotspot if they think you're playing games with it. Now the next set of questions are all about connectivity and mobility of your Helium hotspot. So the first one is, does the internet speed of my house affect the earnings of my hotspot? Well, putting it simply, the answer is yes. Every hotspot does a speed test twice a day. Now that speed test must pass a minimum of 100 megabytes per second download speed with good latency. Otherwise, your rewards will start being reduced and eventually it will just disconnect. Now, as you can see right here on Helium Geek, it says the last time this did a speed test was this morning at 10.35 a.m. and I had a download speed of 138 megabytes per second, upload speed of 15 megabytes per second, and latency of 13 milliseconds. So it did pass its speed test and it will do this twice a day. So make sure your internet is up to par before you decide to buy a hotspot. Now, the next question I get is all about connectivity issues. So what happens if your internet goes out for a couple hours? Do you lose your rewards for that day? The answer is no, you don't. You see, your Helium miner is getting a heartbeat registration once per hour. It's 24 per day. And all you have to do is make sure that you are connected for at least 12 of those out of 24 to earn rewards for that day. Now, if your internet is down for several days, yes, it will disconnect. And then once it does reconnect, you do have to get back to that full 12 or more heartbeats in a 24 hour time frame to get your rewards back up and earning. So make sure your internet stays solid. But if it does go out for a couple hours, there's no worries. You're still going to get your rewards. Now, the next question is all about setting up your hotspots. A lot of people were asking, can you use a power over ethernet injector to power up the indoor hotspot? The answer is yes. The indoor does come with a power pack, but I have tested it and you can use a PoE injector to run the indoor hotspot. Now, special note, if you buy an outdoor hotspot, it does not come with any kind of power adapter. You must buy a separate PoE injector to power up the outdoor hotspot doesn't really tell you that anywhere. So if you want to know more about the outdoor hotspot, go check out this video here where I walk you step by step through the setup process. Now, earlier I mentioned mobility. It's because I've had some very unique questions. One of them was, can I set up my hotspot and then take it to work with me because I work in a busy restaurant? Another one is, can I set up my hotspot at home and then tether it with my phone and then drive around town to get more data rewards? Sadly, no. And I'll tell you why. It's called HIP 119. So if we take a look at the documentation, we can see right here that the maximum asserted distance difference allowed for an indoor hotspot is 200 meters. If you exceed 200 meters with an indoor hotspot, you will start to get a reduced trust score. With a reduced trust score, you get reduced earnings. Now, as you can see, an outdoor hotspot is even more critical. You see, the difference in assertion locations for an outdoor hotspot is a maximum of 75 meters until you start losing your trust score and all the way down to 101 meters until you lose all your rewards entirely. But the great thing is they do give you a little bit of leeway. Now that can come in really handy when you're trying to onboard your hotspot. So here's a tip. If you've got an outdoor hotspot and you know the approximate area of your roof where you're gonna mount it, go ahead and onboard it down on the ground, close to that area. Make sure it's onboarded, everything is working correctly before you take it all the way up to the roof and try and mount it. Because I can tell you firsthand, Trying to onboard a hotspot while you're bouncing on a ladder 15 feet in the air is not a lot of fun and it can take a little while. So you could be up there a bit. Now, the last thing I want to share with you on proof of coverage, I call the pot of gold. And if you happen to be in one of these golden regions, man, I'm telling you, get yourself an indoor hotspot, get it set up. And I'm going to show you why. So we're back here on the Hello Helium Planner. Go ahead and change your reward multiplier all the way up to the 25 to 100 X. Now from here, check out the map. See how we've got a couple of these purple spots like down here in Miami? Let's go ahead and zoom in on some of those. Now, when we go into here, let's click on the one right here on Miami Beach somewhere. Okay, let's grab one of these purple hexes. And as you can see right there, reward and multiplier 100x. But what does that really look like? Well, to do that, let's turn on the coverage strength. Now, let's find a hotspot in one of those areas. That one happens to have one. And as we can see right here, it is an indoor hotspot. Let's go and check on its earnings. Over the last day, it has earned 39,747 mobile tokens or $41.99 in one day. What about a week? One week, $288. Remember, this is with a $249 Helium Indoor Miner. 
they're earning $288 a week. And in one month, $1,010 for $249 a minor. That is why I call this the pot of gold. So if you happen to be in one of these really good areas, man, I can't even tell you what it would be worth to get an indoor hotspot and just set it up. It's going to pay for itself in a week, and then you're pulling in $1,000 a month. Now, of course, these spots may not maintain that, but man, while the opportunity is there, take advantage of it. I think we've covered the proof of coverage area pretty well, but if there's anything I missed, let me know in the comments below, and I'm happy to get whatever answers I can for you. So let's dive into the second revenue stream that every Helium hotspot earns from, and that is data offloading. How does it work exactly? Well, you see, we set up our hotspots trying to get cell phones that are running the Helium app to pass through that zone. Now, every time a Helium cell phone that is either downloading or uploading data passes within our hotspots range, it will automatically connect to the local hotspot and utilize its data source instead of the cell phone towers. Now, a cell phone can pass through several different hotspots on its journey during a day, and it will automatically switch from hotspot to tower and back and forth and offload data on any hotspots available. So that's what we're really looking for, and that's why we recommend setting up hotspots that have a lot of cell phone activity in its area. Great places like schools, libraries, sporting events, any place that has a lot of people congregating are likely to have a lot of cell phones connected. But now let's talk about exactly how much you can make for data offloading. You see, data offloading is not specific based on the hotspot, but actually on the number of devices and even the cell phone plan your cell phones are running. So if you're signed up with a Helium mobile cell phone plan and you're paying $10 a month for your plan, that means you can offload 20 gigabytes of data per month in rewards. Now that's to any hotspot you pass through. Those hotspots will earn that. But once your cell phone has offloaded 20 gigabytes of data, it will stop paying out rewards to those hotspots. Now it can still connect and it can still offload. Simply put, the hotspots will not earn rewards after it hits that 20 gigabytes of data for a $10 a month plan. Now, if you're running one of the newer $20 a month cell phone plans, you can offload 40 gigabytes of data per month in rewards. Now, once again, it can still offload more data past that 40 gigabytes. It's just not going to earn rewards for the data that's offloaded to those hotspots. Now, if we utilize the cell phone price plan divided by the amount of data for each price plan, lets us know that one gigabyte of data that's offloaded is about 50 cents. So that means for your hotspot, every gigabyte of data that passes through your hex and offloads to your hotspot is going to pay you 50 cents per gig. So hopefully you're setting up your hotspot where you know you're going to get a lot of foot traffic and hopefully several of those cell phones are running the Helium cell phone plan. Now let's jump into some of the technical questions you guys have asked. So biggest thing is what is the difference between the indoor and the outdoor hotspot? So as we take a look at the specifications side by side here, the first thing, of course, is the most obvious, which is indoor versus outdoor. Outdoor can handle the rain, the snow, things along those lines. Indoor cannot. So if you're going to set up this hotspot in an area that's susceptible to weather, definitely go with the outdoor hotspot. Now, the next thing is the range. Now, the indoor hotspot you can see has 150 feet indoors and approximately 3,305 square feet of coverage. Now, the outdoor hotspot has a range of up to 800 feet with line of sight. Really important, like I talked about before, if you have trees or structures, definitely get up above them. That way you can maximize on your returns. Now it does say the best place for the indoor is places like cafes, shops, restaurants, and shopping centers. Now for an outdoor hotspot, it recommends places like parks, beaches, streets, or rooftops. Now the great thing about both indoor and outdoor is they have a lot of different mounting options. The indoor has the bracket that comes with it, lets you mount it to the ceiling or the wall, as well as just setting on a shelf. The outdoor actually comes with an external pole mounting bracket that can be used on a pole or a surface mount as well. And it even has an angled bracket on it where you simply loosen a couple screws and adjust the angle for optimum returns. Now the power requirements for these are very different. The indoor hotspot comes with a power pack, it allows you to plug it directly in the wall and directly in the hotspot. But it also has a capability to use a power over ethernet injector. You will have to buy that separately, but it does have that option. That way, in case you mount it on a ceiling or a wall, you don't have to have two cables running to it, or it doesn't have to be near an outlet. So it's great that the indoor has those options. The outdoor, however, does not have that option. In fact, it does not even come with a power pack. You must buy a separate power over ethernet injector from someone else to set up your hotspot. And I'll put a link in the description down below to the one that I've been using. And so far it's been working great. So now we've come to that question that everybody loves to ask me, which is 
Serenity, why would I even bother setting up a hotspot at my house? Well, to do that, we have to take all this information that we've just learned and couple it together with one more piece. And that's all about the Helium cell phone plan. Now, if you don't know about the Helium cell phone plan and how it works, definitely go check out my video right here because I'm going to show you exactly how you can get paid to use your cell phone instead of paying somebody else. But on top of that, in my house, we have a lot of cell phones. In fact, we got a big family. Every one of these signifies a different cell phone that's running in my house. That's six of them. As we learned on the math, that's $20 per line, which means my hotspot can earn $120 a month from data offload on top of proof of coverage. So for my family, it just makes sense. So I think we've come to the time I've answered all the questions I had, even tossed in a couple extras of things that I wouldn't know about. The most important thing here is do your own research and decide for yourself. Never listen to me or anybody else because our experience might vary from yours. So make sure you know what you're getting into before you invest in any crypto project. Now, if you've enjoyed this content and you want to see more, do me a huge favor. Take a minute, like the video and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to keep bringing you the best crypto information I can. I want to thank you very much for your time. Until next time, have a great night.